Welcome back to Griffin, Indiana, everyone, for episode number four. This is Chad from CBW Farms coming at you. And you can see we're just cultivating away here. It's still day one of early spring, so yeah, we just a lot of tillage going on here. We got a, a couple sowing contracts we can do later on, but we'll probably do them in game tomorrow or whatever. So yeah, yeah let's see, we're just about six o'clock in the evening here starting to get a little dark so the daylight isn't very long this time of the year so yeah we're just kind of plugging away i guess so but i thought i'd stop a little while and chat with you guys and and hopefully everybody's having a a good day and yeah i'm glad you're tuned in again and hopefully you've watched the first three episodes and i'm turning I can't talk and turn at the same time, obviously. There. Now we're kind of under a roll here, I guess. But Well, a little about me, if you haven't watched the channel before. Uh, uh, my name is Chad. And I'm a real-life farmer in northwest Iowa, in the USA. Uh, we, uh, I mostly take care of pigs. Uh, I grow them, some of them from... Uh, nursery size so I a wean to, f to finisher and I have some of my barns are feeder pig to finisher so basically I fatten up pigs no matter what size they come into me at and last week we got just about 4400 head of little pigs in one site which is the biggest site that I take care of and we're selling out of well two of the other three of the four sites <laughs> however that sounds confusing uh, four sites total that i take care of and uh, we've been selling out of one site like i said we got new pigs in one site we've been selling out of one site well now it turns out next week i will be emptying that first site i was talking about with the fat hogs uh the end of the week so i got a load going out tuesday i believe and then 
Thursday I empty that site out. So I would imagine the beginning of the following week I'll be getting new feeder pigs in. Meaning they're pigs that are oh about 65 pounds, 60, 65, maybe 70 pounds when they come in. Uh, they're not too too bad for starting. You kind of count them off the truck as they come in the barn, get them all put in their pens and and do a little bit of sizing. It's not near as tough as what the ISO weans are, other than they're not as easy to to lift over the gates, I guess. But because they're yeah, like I said, a little bit heavier when they come in. But but generally they're they're not they're not terrible amount of work to to get started. So so like I said, not this coming week, but the next week I'll be getting probably a thousand eleven hundred feeder pigs in. And also this coming week we will be starting to sell what we call a first cut out of third of the four sites. So the pigs are getting fat in there too. So yeah, quite a few loads going out this week again anyway. And, and the sad part is a lot of my uh, guys that I have helped me sort are going to be gone to the state fair here in Iowa this coming week. So not sure how we're going to do everything. I think I can get one load sorted with help yet on Monday for Tuesday's load. Get them pre-sorted is what we kind of do so they're they're ready to go and it takes a lot of stress off the pig because when you're sorting them it stresses them out pretty bad. And, you know they can kind of crowd a little bit too much and it's just hard on them there. Oh basically if you were a, a rather obese person and you were running 10 miles all of a sudden with no exercise before that. That's kind of what it's like on their hearts. It's kind of hard on them a little bit, but they usually come through it pretty good. You know, they get a, a day to kind of calm down again before we load them. And loading doesn't usually take too long to, to load a semi-load. But So yeah, that'll be coming up this coming week. And uh, I know we got some more grass on the farm we need to cut again too uh, with the disc mower or do some more baling. We've left one grass strip, uh, kind of go to seed again, more or less. It was new seeding last year, and it, it it didn't grow the best last year. So this year it looked really good, so we wanted the grass to head out. And so probably in the next two weeks I'll be mowing that, and then we'll be baling that. So maybe by that time, I'm not guaranteeing anything, but maybe by the time that I'm mowing that, I'll have the uh, camera up and going and, and start getting you guys some video logs. Um, I'm hoping to start that here fairly soon. Like I said, there's not a lot going on on our main farm, you know, so to speak, for the crop farming. It's just a lot of pig work, but I'll show you guys a little bit of the pig stuff. I, I can't show you an overly amount because we don't own the pigs and you know, it would be hard to, to get permission from the, the pig owners to have their pigs video just because of PETA and everything else. I mean, not that there's anything wrong, but, but nobody, you know, nobody wants to be exposed, you know, feeling or whatever. But, but I will, you know, send you some pictures of, of the pigs anyway, and, you know, because they're all doing good anyway. And um, I know some guys were a little bit interested in what we feed the pigs. And... Uh, so I, I want to show a little bit of what the feed looks like. It's I got two different kinds of feed that we normally get, two different kinds of looking feed. Uh, for our isoween pigs, we get pelleted feed, so they're just in pellets. And for our finishing pigs, or our bigger pigs, we get ground feed. Basically, it's it looks like corn ground up really fine, you know, not not quite like flour or anything like that, but. You know, and, and it's got uh, uh, distillers in it. Distillers is a byproduct from the ethanol plant, you know, from corn base. So it's a good protein value. And and plus there's, you know, uh, in some of the bigger pigs, we run this uh, chemical through them we call skysis. And what that does is it just helps them eat better. It's not a hormone or anything like that. It just helps their appetite that... You know that they want to eat or whatever or makes it taste better I, I don't know I guess I've I've never intentionally eaten pig feed I've had plenty of it fly in my face I guess when it's dusty or windy outside and the dust blows at you if you're working underneath the bin but I know I'll be showing some of that anyway too here later on but but I think what 
my first video log will probably end up being is uh, I talk to a guy that I take care of his pigs or his barns. That's where my ISO wings are at. The, it's a four barn site, so four barns in one place. And that's where the 4,400 little guys are at. And anyway, the, the gentleman that owns that barn, I don't own the barn. I just take care of the pigs. Uh, he runs a manure crew. Basically, they, they pump slurry, like we call it in the game here. We call it liquid manure, but, but slurry uh, out of cattle confinements and out of uh, uh, pig barns pig, and pig lagoons. Some barns have lagoons at them where they actually drain into. So that's what they kind of do for a living. And that's who my son that helps me on the farm, that's who he works for full time. So we kind of get to work together a little bit more now. You know, like I said, we get to work a little bit in the fall, but that's their busy time, too. At the, you know, when when I'm busy in the field is when those guys are busy in the field because they normally wait for some be soybeans to be harvested because we, we harvest soybeans first normally. And uh, and that's where most of the pig manure goes on. And uh, even cattle manure, too. But a lot of the cattle manure also goes on ground that had silage chopped on it. You know, so that, that gets done a little earlier, too. So it could be in end of August here, beginning of September, uh, the crew will be going out to, to South Dakota, I think, and uh, and applying manure on ground that, like I said, that had been uh, chopped to silage. But anyway, what I was getting at with that whole scenario is one of my first video logs will probably be the equipment that well, this guy's name is George, so George's equipment that he's got and what the guys use, and he's got some really sweet tractors. He's got a quad track John Deere. He's got a quad track Case International. I think it's a 470. Uh, I can't remember the number of the quad track John Deere. And he's got some 8R and 7R series John Deere's with great big floater tires on them and and all their equipment that they use. They they don't use tanks to haul their slurry. They use drag lines. So basically there's an umbilical cord that'll come from a pump, from whatever they're pumping out of, out of whatever lagoon. And, uh, and it, it could be two miles away. I mean, it's it's a long hose, basically. Uh, a lot of it's six inch, eight, six inch hose, eight inch hose, and, and it's got great big carts that they go on that automatically winds them up or you know you use your hydraulics on your tractor and so like I say I, I asked George for his permission if I could video some of his his tractors and stuff I mean they won't be in use or anything it's just going to be kind of a kind of a tour of some of his equipment I'm not sure where all of his stuff is at so I'm not going to snoop through his buildings or anything like that but he's got a really nice shop that the that the guys work in and you know, throughout the summer and through the winter when they're not pumping manure. Or, so he keeps the guys busy. So yeah, he's agreed that that would be okay for me to, to video log some of his stuff. So so yeah, we'll, we'll see some nice equipment. And I'm not sure on his Quad Track International if I caught that right, but it sounds like they might be trading that off for another John Deere Quad Track. I, I'm not sure. It wasn't anything to do with the tractor but where they were getting their service done they you know george wasn't real happy with with them people or whatever they you know they their service just wasn't very good you know they did a good job of fixing and stuff but but yeah so i think that's why he's thinking about another john deere but well let's finish this contract off here a second and let's find another one like I said, this is kind of what this video is mostly going to be about. Um, I think field 7, I'm going to accept that one because I think that's bias. Um, um, boy. Oh yeah, it's right across the road from us almost. Just a little field, so it ain't going to pay very good, but... We might as well do that one a minute while we're here. But at any rate, like I said... Uh, like to show you George's equipment. And bangs. Most of our equipment is still in sheds yet, and, and we're actually trying to 
trade for a, a different corn head for the combine. Like I say, we got a, a John Deere 9560 combine at STS. It, it's a rotor combine, not a cylinder. Uh, we've always been running a six row corn head on it because we've had a 12 row planter over the years. But now we went to a 16 row planter this spring. So to match the rows better, it's nicer to use an eight row uh, corn head. In other words, the rows in between, we call it the odd row. You only know, got rows one through 16 and, and in between rows one and 16 when you're turning, sometimes you get kind of a wide gap in there and sometimes it's a narrow gap in there and, and you knock ears off, you know, once the crop is ripened or whatever, if you hit it wrong with the head. And we're getting kind of dark on here. But, uh, so yeah, we're looking for a different corn head at the moment. We got somebody that's interested in, in our old one. And so that's a good deal. But they're kind of harder to come by this year. Uh, a lot of people are looking for upgrading equipment with the prices having been a little bit better this year, the grain prices. And so, yeah, there's a little competition out there. So I haven't heard yet if, if Mark, who I, you know, who I help out on the farm, if he decided anything on the, the corn head today or not, we had a call from an implement dealer or the guy that we get a lot of our, our machinery from, and they kind of had one that sounded like it would fit the bill, but but there's eh, still a lot of negotiating to go on there, too. But And, uh, yeah, so, like I say, if we get that, that'll, you know, be something else I'd like to show. And, you know, don't want to show the whole old one if we're not going to be using it anyway. And... And like I said, most of our machinery is still in the shed yet. And, you know, here probably the end of this month, more than likely to be more. End of September, we'll be getting the tractors out more. And, you know, we've been doing some work on, uh, I know Mark's son has been painting tire uh, rims on on our 8520 John Deere, the one that came from Larson Farms, and making that look good and getting it all waxed up. And But other than that, most of the maintenance is done. We kind of had everything done this spring or whatever on maintenance of the tractors. There's a few little things we're getting fixed on a couple tractors, but nothing real major. So we don't have much to do with the tractors. And, and our combine is at an implement dealer where we store it at in the wintertime. You know, we give them so much money for storage, but then in the middle of the winter, let's say, if they get slow in the shop, they can pull a combine out. You know, they might have, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 combines that they store over the winter and the summer too, I guess, as far as that goes, any off season. And they can pull combines out as they kind of, you know, kind of need to do the work, I guess. And, and our combine, they worked on the spring, I believe, is when they went through it and did all the maintenance on it. And, I mean, we could do it too, but it's kind of a, a nice program that the dealer has. It's yet yeah, not overly cheap, but but still they go through it pretty thoroughly. And so yeah, we won't have the combine back till probably sometime in September. So again, there too, you know. So when I do my video log of, of our equipment, I'd, I kind of like you guys to to see it all and when it's out and about. And like I said, everything's kind of tucked away for the off season yet. And so I'm not ignoring the the requests, I guess, but it's just nice to keep them inside, especially when the sun is as bright as what it is right now in the summertime and hard on the paint and you never know if we get hail or, or anything like that either, I guess. You know, storms, you know, have tree branches fall on something and we like to keep them inside. Uh, we got everything all washed up this spring after we were done using it. You know, and the stuff from last fall was all washed up. You know, our, our ripper that we use, we got a John Deere 510 ripper. It's not very big. It's only probably 14 and a half, 15 foot wide, I believe, at the most. It barely covers the duels of the tractor. It's kind of a small implement for the big tractor that we're putting it on, but it's what we have, and it isn't worth much, but it does a nice job. And uh, I think we put new, new points on the shanks last year, and the point is the the part that's the very bottom that digs in the ground. And so we had them all replaced, or all five of them, that, that's all there is on there. It's a five shank ripper. So yeah, we'll be getting that ready, but we'll probably 
combine some beans before we get the rippers and the disc ready. We have a Case International, like a 30 or 32 foot disc. Uh, I can't remember the number on that one either. It, it's newer than a 490 like what we have on game here, but it's not the new, new ones. It's just one Case and International kind of combined. So it was a Case International, not just an International. So yeah. So that's we store in a neighbor's shed. We rent some space from him, and we have a grain cart in there, and the and the disc is in there. You know, just give him so much money for all the off seasons or whatever, because they sit in there pretty much nine months out of the year. There, I talked us through another contract. See, I can keep talking. Let's go in the menu here, and let's collect our twelve hundred and eighty dollars off that one. Um, what else would be close to us here? I think 32 is pretty close. It's a pretty small field. We might as well go to him a minute. I'll show you where we're at on the map here. You can see we're kind of, if you look on your left-hand side, right in the middle. Middle left-hand side, we're right by field 7 and 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, 32 is just down the road from us. It's just kind of a little curved, small field right on the intersection, so that's where we're heading next. We're more in the custom business here in the spring, because we don't have much land on here, and we don't have much money to buy land, so as you can see, we're up to just about 63,000, a little shy. And I'm keeping my eye on the fuel gauge. I see we're at about a half a tank, and well, we put just about five hours on, so so at about 10 hours, we'll be getting pretty close to empty, I would imagine. Here we are. Oh, it looks like some withered potatoes or, or sugar beets, I bet. Sugar beets, yep, the way it's planted. Get that all settled. It goes up first, and then it goes down. And in case you missed the last episode, or the, even the first one, behind the tractor, in between the tractor and this field cultivator, there's a three-point draw bar. It's a mod. It's in the mod hub under miscellaneous. And it makes it a little cheatier. So if this is your first video that you're watching of mine and wondering how I'm going 16 miles an hour, 17 miles an hour at times, it's because I have that on there. And I wouldn't be doing that if I would hire workers, but I, I rarely hire workers whenever I play. Because, well, like I said, with the mod like that, that little draw bar, you got to make sure it's lifted up after you hook it up. So if you look on the very top left-hand corner of the screen, you see where the tractor is there. And then behind the tractor, there's two implements. I'm on the field cultivator, which is the very back one, which is highlighted in white. And then the one above, in front of that is that draw bar. And like I say, that little draw bar is, is what we use. I'll try to remember to show everybody that once we step out of the tractor here, but I think we'll get this contract on this field done first. But yeah, like I said, I, I can go 16, 17 with that draw bar attached to this, but the worker will still only go, oh, 9 miles an hour, 9 to 11. I don't remember what this field cultivator actually goes without that draw bar attachment on it. And the worker, with this cultivator, for some reason, I don't know if it's that draw bar or, or what it is, they don't turn around very well at all with it. They don't like it. They do a nice job in the middle of the field, but it takes so long for this AI workers to to get anything done. So I always figure it's just quicker to do it ourselves. And that way we're saving money, too, at the same time. I'm all about that. And on this map, so far on this Let's Play, we haven't borrowed any money. I'm trying not to, but we may have to borrow a little bit to buy a harvester come the fall when our crops are ready. But we got to make sure our crops grow first and, and everything else. So. Yeah, well, like I said, this field won't take us very long here. But no, I just thought I'd talk a little bit about our real life farm, I guess. Like I said, in case you're new to the channel, and didn't know that's that's what I do. I, I I farm and I play farming simulator. Uh, I've had 
subscriber ask me, why would you want to play a game when you do it in real life? Uh, this game is a lot less stressful. It, you know, uh, we don't field cultivate at 16, 17 miles an hour. We, you know, when we work ground, we're going about five and a half or six miles an hour. That's about it. You know, pretty much like what the in-game combines harvesters, you know, harvest at. But when it comes to harvesting, we don't go six miles an hour either. We go more like four and a half to five. You know, beans, we go a little slower than corn. But beans takes quite a bit. It's kind of like in the game here. The yield is a lot less on beans, but the price is worth more. So you can fit a lot more in there. And so our, our head that we have for the combine, it's a 30-foot head. So that takes 12 rows. So you can tell already that's bigger than our what will be 8-row corn head. But the corn fills up a lot faster. All right. Like I said, I, I, I'm getting anxious to show you guys, you know, everything else besides farm sale, I guess. But it, it'll be just a little bit yet, so please bear with me. Like I say, other than pigs being real busy here lately, mowing lawn has been really busy lately, too. It's just about twice a week we have to mow. There's a gift out of hand. It, it had been kind of, you know, been hot for sure, but it was really humid, and we've had a few rain showers. We're, we're still plenty dry, but, you know, we look better than some parts of the country. I mean, you get, you know, like I said, a half hour south of here, and the crops look a lot different, and uh, they don't look bad, but the lawns and that are really brown, and ours are really green. But, like I say, we get a lot of humidity, too, and fog, and and stuff like that. I mean, we get a lot of sunshine during the day, but overnight, it, like I said, that air gets pretty heavy. And So, like I said, I mean, it's not much moisture, but it's some moisture that, that it gets off that off that dew. And, you know, it keeps the leaves green, and unfortunately, it keeps the grass green, too. And on the lawn that I live, where I live, it takes about six hours to mow, and we got to... Uh, a John Deere zero turn mower with a 60 inch deck on it and, and you know you can you know unless it gets too tall on you we can mow it about nine miles an hour and, you know so, so sometimes I could probably do it in four and a half five hours you know if it was drying out a little bit but most of the time we average probably about six hours and, and then I have to mow one of the hog sites too and that one don't take very long about an hour or so you know as long as I keep up with it so like I said, that's most of the action that we get around here right at the moment. And like I said, until maybe a couple weeks from now, if we get the, the disc more hooked back up, we got to, you know, do our, what we call the top swath on the ditches, which is right along the road, basically. The grass that you see that grows along the road. So we like to keep that short so visibility is better on intersections. And and in the winter time, you like to keep that short so snow don't drift. You know, if you got tall grass and weeds, you know, laying, you know, right along the road, that's not a good thing either. So we usually do that, a, you know, two, three times a year. Get all the ditches cut on the top. All right, I'm not sure where we're going to go here yet. I know we're not. Well, we could go north. I know we got a field up here we can do. While we're chatting. Like I said, this isn't going to be an overly exciting episode, but but tis see tis the season for seasons, I guess. That's just kind of part of it. Like I say, I don't play with seasons very often, kind of because of this. I mean, I'd be doing this or doing a lot of logging or or something to fill the days in or fast forwarding time. But let's see, field 32, we are done on, so we'll get our thousand dollars for that. And it's field number 12 is the one that we're just entering right now. Yeah, $745. It's not a very big paying job, but I guess it doesn't cost us much to do this either, other than a little bit of wear and tear on the machinery and, and some fuel. So, And the fuel in this field probably costs us maybe 5 bucks by the time we're done. But just guesstimating anyway. Yeah, it won't be long here. We'll be going to bed and, and seeing what tomorrow brings. But we'll get this field done with first. 
again, like I always say in all my videos, you know, make sure you guys comment, you know, anything that you guys want to see and, you know, whether it be real life and stuff like that so I can start getting some stuff in order for it. Like I say, we are definitely no Larson Farms or Millennial Farmer or Welker Farms by any means or Tom Pemberton. You know, we're pretty small farmers. That's the reason I got to take care of all these pigs. That's kind of my my income for the year anyway. That's what pays the, you know, our, our regular bills and vehicle payments and insurances and phone bills and internet and like I say, it's not a high, high paying deal, but it, it covers the bills anyway. And there, there is some, like I said, I mean, even though, like my loading time with pigs now, I have certain times of the day that I got to load. In fact, one of the mornings next week, I know I got to start loading at 3.30 in the morning. And I think we finish loading the last load of that day, which they're going to be stock trailer. You know, we got one semi, I think, and, and a couple stock trailers to, to fill up. I think it's about 6 o'clock in the morning. We should be done. And emptying that barn, I believe that's Thursday morning of next week, so from the day of recording this anyway. I mean you might be watching this two years down the road and that's all null and void, but but that that's kind of the hardest part about the pig farming. It, it's not so much the pigs or handling the pigs or it's kind of the schedule of stuff. But that's also sometimes the good part of it. You know, some days I can you know, get up early in the morning, uh Tomorrow morning, we, we take off for Iowa City, Iowa, to bring my son to get him started getting ready for college and go visit a few places down there over the weekend. So, so tomorrow morning, I want to get up early and do chores. You know, it'll probably still take me, with all the pigs that I have, probably about four hours, five hours, I better allow myself. You know, and we'd like to take off here at 9 o'clock in the morning, so... And I got a shower. I don't want to smell like a pig. That's not very pretty. Pigs don't smell like bacon. They smell more like the other end. All right. Yeah, kind of a nice dusky evening here on Griffin. And really on this map, a lot of our area looks somewhat similar to this. You know, not exactly, but, you know, there's trees here and there. You know, mostly they're in people's groves, and there's some wild trees, but no big forest or anything like that where we live. You know, so that part up there probably ain't quite like here, but there is some some spots that have more trees, I guess. But And, like, this field has got a little bit of a hill to it. This is more like what our ground is like. A little hillier. All right. I think, being as we're this close to our yard, we'll bring the tractor up to the yard anyway. That way the hooligans aren't messing with it, hopefully. Remember off last episode, we don't actually live on our farmyard yet. Like I say, we'll, we'll get our house or our shouse or whatever we're going to build up here put in. I'm not sure quite which side of things yet, but yeah. I don't think it's going to rain tonight, so we can leave the tractor set out, which I guess you can see the tractor is getting kind of dirty anyway, so a little rain would be nice to wash things off. See the field cultivator is getting really dirty too. And that draw bar I was talking about, that's what it looks like right there, that little piece with the little holes in it. Like I said, if you're not familiar with this, if you're new to the game or whatever, you might not know, but it does work on a few implements. Uh, like I said, that 2410 John Deere plow that we use to plow our grassland, that I use this draw bar on also, and it works the same way, where you can go a little faster with it. Like I said, it's a little cheaty, but at the same rate, I'm still doing it all myself yet, not hiring workers, so... Yeah, let's go check on our chickens here. And there's our rooster, cock a doodle doo. They're still kind of crowing, even though it's about bedtime. I don't think a chicken's clock is like what we think it is. 
Uh, the feed area looks nice and clean, yeah. That's a good sign. Wow, we got one chicken box already. I didn't know that we would get that already in seasons. So see there, I've even learned something already. Let's go into our help menu here and get our $745. And we'll see the, the contracts might change overnight anyway, so, so we won't get our hopes up on anything or get close to a field. Excuse me, I got a cough here. So. <coughs> but uh, we'll see what the contracts are when we wake up in the morning. Um, what I was going to do... Oh, that's right, we're on Seasons. So I need to hit this menu to look at the animals. Again, that's a little different than playing non-seasons. You got a whole different menu for animals. We got 11 chickens. So that's what we started with, 10 hens and one rooster. Uh... We have one liter of eggs, so I guess that box is not very full. Hmm. That or next box is starting, but now nah, I'm guessing it's the... With only ten, ten hens, we're probably not going to get a lot yet, but... Maybe we'll buy some of them here tomorrow, too, again, and, and get some more chickens going. Yeah, what else can we look at in here? The economy uh, for selling stuff. Most everything sells the best over winter or in spring. Most of the crops, you can see, yeah. Here we're looking in spring for soybeans. Corn. Not a bad area right now, but again, there too, it looks like, well, that almost early summer is a better price, or midsummer, even pretty good price. We don't have a lot of that, but kind of fun to watch the graph play around with it like that. Looks like somebody's playing music. There's a crop rotation planner, not really using that yet. Um, yeah, we... I don't know what we had in our other field. In our field one that we have. And here we're on six day seasons. I think we're going to change that to three day seasons before the end of the day here. Otherwise, it'll be all messed up. Six days is awful long. Unless you had a lot of livestock and and did a lot of logging, so we're going to go down to three days on here instead. So that's going to change some of our maps around a little bit here. Let's look at our calendar. So yeah, you can see tomorrow soybeans and corn would be safe to plant. If the temperature's up. You can see it's in the blue yet, so it's too cold. It's got to be, you know, the, the number where it says 43 degrees up by the, by the wheat there. That white 43 degrees, that means it's safe. If you look down at the cotton, which you can't plant cotton on this map, even though there's cotton on here on <laughs> starting out, but you can see it needs 64 degrees just to germinate. So, yeah, that, that won't work on here. We won't, don't have a long enough summer, I guess. But that's all right. We're not going to do cotton anyway. Did I say something about rain? <laughs> wow. I said we'll leave the tractor out because it ain't going to rain. Well, maybe it'll wash it off for us a little bit. But with that being said, for right at the moment, I will see you guys here in the morning. Good morning here in Griffin, Indiana. You can see the lights are still on in the house yet. The kids must be home. Our grass isn't really growing too much here yet for the lawn that we'd have to take care of. We don't have to worry about that at the moment. Our F-350 sitting here. I guess we can head back up to the farm and see what contracts we can do. I guess we can clean up our chickens a minute. And they may have spilled a little bit of feed, and, and maybe we'll buy a few more, too. I gotta remember that these brakes don't work very good. Nor am I a very good driver, either. I'm amazed I have not hit any of these signs yet on this Let's Play. That's kind of a miracle. Oh, looks like grass is turning there. I think our crops are kind of turning a little bit. Being it's mid-spring. 
Maybe our corn germ or a corn or grass germinated in our big field up here. We'll drive up there and check it out a minute. I hope it all germinates good. Yeah, it looks like a greenish tint out there. Yay, we have grass. Kind of drive through here a little bit, and I'm going to expand way out. See that we didn't miss anything. I don't think we did. It's kind of hard to see in some of the shade of the trees there, but... My dad would kick my butt if he seen me driving through a freshly sown grass field. But plenty of time for it to, to heal before we mow. But yeah. And we still have to plant something in our in our other field there, field number one. So I'm kinda thinking now maybe we'll go with some corn. Corn or soybeans. Park him out of the way over here. All right. Let's go check our chickens. Did the rain clean the tractor off at all? Don't look like it. <coughs> nope. Everything's still dirty. We must not have had enough rain last night. Huh? Chickens are still clean. We still wouldn't have to clean them up. <coughs> Excuse me. Still just our one box of eggs. So we'll go back into the menu over here. Um, corn and soybeans aren't quite... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Quite to the planting stage yet. They're still... The ground temperature's still at 50 degrees... Or still needs to be at 50 and it's below that, I think it's 48 degrees, so so no corn or soybean planting, at least this morning. But, so I'm guessing we're not going to plant field number one today yet either. Farm dog Jim came up to see what I was doing, and he's turning in circles. I'm not saying that he's right in the head. We have 12 liters of eggs. Okay. I think. <coughs> I don't know if you can hear it sounds like thunder in here, but that's the dog running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He is quite the little thing. All right. I think we had the white leg horns, if I remember right. And let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, let's get 25. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Confirm. There, we got more chickens. <coughs> Boy, excuse me again. I got a tickle in my throat. There. We'll go back to this other menu. And how are they looking on feed? We got 36 in here. Oh, I think we need another rooster too. Well, we'll we'll leave the one rooster in there. He'll have a good day today. But wheat and barley look good yet, so I don't have to add any of that. But well, I'm gonna go. Get my telephone here, get on my cell phone and do some calling around and see who needs some work done on their farms. We got Bigfoot, Sasquatch, wanted dead or alive, $5,000 reward. Hmm. I don't know if anybody's found him yet. Might have heard him, but I don't know of anybody finding him. But anyhow, after we sort things out, I will be right back with you. All right, guys, I made a few phone calls, and yeah, we got a bunch more custom work to do. So what we're going to do is jump in the old MX Magnum again. We're going to head down to field 32, I believe it is. 
and going to do some more cultivating. But with that being said, I know I've bored you guys long enough with all my yammering on again. I seem to talk a lot lately. I don't know what my deal is. It must be because I work around pigs all day and I don't have anybody to talk to, I guess. So, so you guys are my outlet, I guess. So, well, this is the field we're going to be doing right next to the bridge here. Looks like another withered field, a withered field of potatoes, so... Alright, let's unfold here. Yeah, with that being said, I think we're going to end it here today, and... Yeah, if you guys have any ideas for the, the series here, what we should be doing in the meantime, and waiting on the seasons to change, and, and all that, let me know in the comments, and... Uh, if you like the video, please pound that like button, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And, and if you guys want to share this video, then go ahead, and you got my, my thumbs up for that. So, well, with all that being said, I think I'm going to leave you here for now, and I will catch you guys next time. Alright, thank you kindly for watching. Bye now.